I'd like to welcome schools from all around Australia who've joined the first day Q&A webinar here at the Australian Children's Television Foundation. My name is Peter Maggs, I head up the education area here and it's my pleasure to welcome Eva McDonald, the star and actress of First Day, and the writer and director Julie Kelseth Thank here to the you. ACTF. So welcome Julie and welcome Evie. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Um, I'd like to thank all of the schools that have sent in questions for Evie and Julie. We've had great questions come in. So we might start off, given that First Day has been so successful and has been such a great response to First Day, not only here in Australia, but also around the world. Um, what does it mean for both of you, that success, um, based on not just here, but everywhere that First Day has been shown? I think it's amazing that, you know, it started off uh, in just Australia, but it's spread and it's gone worldwide and stuff. It's really amazing. It is. It's, um, it's done much more than we ever hoped or dreamed. Um, so when Kirsty Stark, who's our producer, who without Kirsty we wouldn't have this film, um, when Kirsty and I first started making it, we our our goal was that you know we just hoped that lots of people would get to see it, and we hoped that lots of children would get to see it, and we hoped that um, that families would get to see it, and not just children who were transgender, but children in general, and um, the response that it's received and the places that it's screened um, has been amazing. You know, we had a broadcast sale to Japan and. It's screened in festivals around the world, so it's been really phenomenal. And this is a bit sneaky of me, Julie, but I've actually printed something out here, whoops, that people <laughs> may not be able to see <laughs> there via our, um, our Zoom link. But you might want to tell us, what's this photo of here? So that's, uh, that's a photo of, <laughs> so Kirsty is the tall one on the right <laughs> of the photo. Um, I'm in the middle and Julia Billington, who was our drama coach, who worked very closely with Evie. Um, and I mean, Evie's a phenomenal actress, um, but Julia um, was great to work with and did a great job working yeah. with Evie and, and the other um, children in the cast. But that's us at um, Prigionet, the uh, Children's Festival, and first day won the Gender Equity Prize. So out of all the children's television around the world, we won that prize and we were also nominated for two other prizes. So it was great, it was really fun. And that's, a, the Prisoners is an incredibly prestigious international award ceremony, so that's a real feather in the cap, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, why is it important for kids to see a film like First Day on our screens? Evie, for you, why do you think it was important? I think it's really important to show awareness and to show kids that this is something that's everywhere, you know, something that's been happening and has been there it since time rules. itself and stuff and since humans have grown and everything. So, you know, the some the fact that some people are hearing about it now, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. And, you know, it just shows that we need to keep on moving and we need to keep on fighting. And I think, you know, with First Day coming out and it going so worldwide, it's absolutely amazing that it's showing so much more awareness and it's going everywhere and everyone's seeing it. It's, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Fantastic. And Julie, what about for you? Um, I think it's important because I think it's important that we see a whole range of diversity on screen. I think um, screen stories are extremely powerful and if we don't see ourselves reflected on screen or if we don't see diverse characters and diverse stories reflected on screen that our world view becomes very narrow. Um, it's important for us to see ourselves um, um, and that's something that I realised when I was growing up that I didn't see myself reflected on screen uh, which was one of the reasons behind making the content that I do and so um, I think if, we, if we're able to see ourselves on screen then we, um, it, it kind of makes us feel as though we are accepted and we are part of society. Otherwise, people start to feel like they're the other and they're, they're left out. I think it also helps that um, when we see a range of different experiences, we realise the fundamental human truth that we're all the same and that, you know, they, we have more in common than we have that's different. And once, especially with children's television, once children see that, then, then they grow up with that and we start discussions, we have conversations and, um, you know, some of the, the only exposure we have to people that, that aren't like ourselves is on screen. And so we need, to, we need to see more representation and we need to be able to tell stories that people can, can watch and realise that, you know, that's, people are pretty much all the same. 
And one of the things that's been, I think, obvious to us here at the ACTF is that we developed, um, thanks to our curriculum officer, Janine Kelly, this beautiful first day teaching toolkit that teachers aren't aware of it. This can be used um, with the first day short film. And we've had interest about this from all over the world, from countries like Israel and Europe. So it's not just here in Australia, mm. I think the point you've both made, this is a universal, um, it's a universal topic and it's relevant to everybody. Mm. Um, and that's been shown out by the interest in, in that resource that we've had from everywhere. And that's a great resource. The, the feedback has been amazing. Everyone, you know, the teachers that have, have seen it have said how great it is. And, and I used to be a school teacher and I wish that I had something like that when I was teaching. Thank you. All right, I think we're now up to where we might cross over for our second question to Rose Park Primary School in Adelaide. And I think Michelle uh, has a question for you, Evie. So we might cross over now and see if Michelle's ready there to ask her question for Evie. Hi, I'm Michelle. Hi. This is for Evie. Um, how did Evie feel when she was chosen to play a transgender character? Wow, I think it was, I was pretty honoured and everything. Being trans myself, I felt I could relate to the character and everything, but also getting chosen, it was like, this is the start and this is exciting and this is gonna be so much fun. And it was. Do you like and it, that? Uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's, it's really good. And, um, you know, I do think that um, getting chosen for a character and everything is awesome and all, but I think we should also be aware that um, that we should be aware that we're not always going to get every role and that when we do we take that in and that we make that role last and that we we make the best of it. Okay so thank you Michelle that's a great question coming from Rose Park Primary School in Adelaide and I suppose a follow-up to that is why was it important that the the actress playing Hannah was transgender perhaps for both of you? Um, it was important for us, for, for Kirstie and I, we, um, when we took this idea to the ABC and, and you know, I think it's, I, I'd like to mention that we had such great support from the ABC and it was because of them that this show was made. Um, uh, so between the ABC and Screen Australia, who were also supported First Day, we, um, they, across the board, there was a discussion about wanting to cast a transgender actor in the role. Uh, for Kirsty and I, it was important because we, um, it feels like, you know, when, when, we're rep when we're dealing with screen representation, there's, there's a great deal of um, misinformation around transgender people. And I think some of that misinformation is that being transgender is just about dressing up um, and it's about pretending to be something you're not. And I think when you cast uh, a cisgender or a non-transgender uh, actor in that role, then that perpetuates that myth. So if you're casting, say, um, if you were casting a, a boy in the role of Hannah, and then um, and then we see that 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 actor is is dressing up in girls' clothes, it perpetuates that that misinformation about what it is to be transgender. So it was our belief um, that you know, transgender characters deserve to be represented authentically and deserve to be represented with truth. And that was really important to us. And, um, and that's kind of what we're aiming for. And the, uh, the other part of that is that I'm not transgender. So I was very much aware, both Kirsty and I were from the start, that this wasn't really our story to tell, um, but we had the resources and we were in a privileged position. And so then once we cast Evie, it became our job to empower Evie to tell her story. I, I mean, I totally agree. I think it's really important that we um, portray a transgender person as a transgender character and stuff. As Julie said, but bringing a, um, a male to play the role as Hannah, it is, it is, it's like, I don't think it's right. I, th I don't think that's fair. And because, you know, Hannah's trans, she's not a male. So getting a male role getting a male person to play the role as a female, that I just, you wouldn't do that. Um, we're going to move on now to a question from Brighton Secondary College, from Year 11 students at Brighton. They unfortunately can't ask the question, so I'll read it out, um, and it's for both of you. 
Do you think First Day has helped other people understand the hardships that trans men, women and kids go through? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, some of the stuff that Hannah goes through, I went through and stuff, and oh, having yes. to get changed before going to school and, you know, Tom -tom. getting dressed Tom -tom. into male clothing, it's heartbreaking. It's and so you're having to pretend to be somebody that you're not. At school now. And feeling anymore. like you're just <laughs> trapped and stuff and that you can't, you can't breathe and everything and I felt that and I felt how Hannah would felt. Yeah, I mean I hope so. I, I, even friends of mine who are part of the LGBT community and, um, and who know transgender people uh, watched it and, and said things like I didn't realise that, that you know, a, a transgender person would have to deal with that or I, didn't, I hadn't actually thought of that. Um, so I hope it, it did make people aware, but I also hope it made people aware that, um, that being transgender is just one aspect of that character and that's just one part of who they are and, and you know, we wanted the story to be about a girl starting high school because that's what everyone can relate to um, and we wanted it to be a universal story and so people watch it and go, I know what that feels like and oh, okay, she's also transgender and that means that she has these other things that she has to deal with as well. And I think one of the beautiful parts of First Aid is universal because we all had to start high school yeah. and that first scary <laughs> turning up. Yeah. New, new kids, don't know anyone. So it really is a universal theme for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, I think Hannah walking into high school for the first time and like, oh my God, who are these people? I, you know, I could relate and I expect that majority of people could relate to that and see how she was feeling. And just because she's trans and stuff, that doesn't change how she felt. Absolutely, and it captures that in a really beautiful way that I think appeals to everybody. First day short. Thank you. All right, um, so thank you for that question from Brighton Secondary College. Our next question is from um, Year 7 from Mary McKillop College in Brisbane, in Queensland. Um, and I think it was originally the question was from Ruby, but unfortunately Ruby's not at school today. So I think uh, Lucia is going to ask that question perhaps if, if we're able to get Mary McKillop College there. If Lucia, you're there. Hi. Hi there. <laughs> Hi. Um, what do you hope the audience might change about themselves and the way they view stereotypes as they grow up? Okay. Good question. I might do, I'll just read that one out to make sure everyone can mm -hmm. hear that. So it was, what do you hope the audience might change about themselves and the way they view stereotypes as they grow up, having watched First Day? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I think majority of people think that um, trans people are different to everyone else. and. We, um, yeah, we're separated, but we're not. We're just like everyone else. Hannah went to school like everyone else, and she had to do, she had to go through the first day, she had to meet friends, and that's what everyone goes through. And I think just because we're labeling something, it doesn't mean we're different. It's like male, female. We're no different, we're, same, we're the same people. It's like trans people. We're the same people. We all go through the same things. And you know, everyone's different. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a good answer. I think, um, I think, you know, as I said before, sometimes the only um, exposure we have to people who aren't like us is on screen. And so hopefully, and I think that's the power of telling stories on screen, that we um, become so engaged with the characters that we, we develop empathy for them and we realise that, that, you know, everyone is very similar. And, um, and that hopefully after watching something like that, then, then when you do meet someone who is transgender, then um, you realise that, you know, that that's just one aspect of who they are, that they're, you know, a multifaceted character, they're a multifaceted person that's good at many different things. Um, and, you know, they, you know, that's one part of them and they should be, you know, seen as more than that. So thank you to Ruby for coming up originally with the question and Lucia for asking it. And I think our next question is actually Lucia again on behalf of Ruby from Mary McKillop College. So we have a follow-up question, Lucia. Have you got that one for Evie and... Um, oh, this, this one's for Julie, I think, actually, for Julie. What is it like being a director and does being a female have any implications? Uh, that's a good question. Um, being a director is the best job in the world and also probably the hardest job in the world at times. Um, it's, I mean, it's great. Being a director means that you are able to, um, to be able to bring stories to, to reality, to bring your vision in, in, into reality. And I'm also a writer 
Um, and so it means that I'm able to create a story and then see it all the way through production. Um, surrounded always by a really strong um, and talented team. Uh, I think uh, there aren't as many women directors are, as there are male directors and the, the industry has been uh, male dominated for a very long time. I think we're seeing a shift in that. I think we're seeing a time where, especially through um, screen organisations like Screen Australia, really helping to support diversity um, behind the camera, so giving more opportunities to female directors. There's a lot more support out there. Uh, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's always difficult to get a project off the ground, um, but there is more support and the more that we support each other and the more that we see, the more that we go and watch Australian film and television and, and especially those directed by, by new voices and by women, I think that, um, that that's only going to keep creating more content and, and the content will keep getting better. And, um, and you know the world loves Australian stories, and and loves, and they're looking for stories by women. They're looking for new stories that we haven't seen for for a long time. And for the aspiring directors and writers out there, Julie, what advice would you have for them? Uh, I guess my advice would be to practice your craft when, whenever you can. Is to get out there and and to work on your craft. If you're a writer. Um, there's not much stopping you from writing except yourself and so if you just practice your craft, keep learning, watch shows, watch films, analyse them, read books about screenwriting, um, you know, watch YouTube channels about screenwriting, you know, really learn your craft. Uh, directing, you know, grab your iPhone and get out there and shoot something. You know, the technology's there now, you don't have to you're not shooting on film like we used to. You're not, you know, we're we're in a tech, we're in a modern day where we've got technology. You can go out and grab your phone and shoot something. Practice your craft, find your voice, find out what stories you want to tell, um, and then once you've done that, then just really believe in in the content that you want to make. Um, the next one is also for you, Julie, but I think maybe Evie, you might want to comment on this one too. And it's from Liliana from Year Six at Rose Park Primary School, so I think we'll cross over to Rose Park and see if Liliana would like to ask her question. What was the most challenging part of filming the short film? So just so everyone could hear that, what was the most challenging part of filming first day? So maybe Julie, then you might want to chip in too. Maybe. Good question, Liliana. Um, I feel like that what we thought would be the most challenging thing actually turned out to be the best thing. So. Uh, when Kirsty and I met with the ABC and they said we want you to cast a transgender actor in the lead, Kirsty and I were great, that's fantastic. And then we walked away and we thought, how do we find a 12 year old transgender girl who can act? Because if you've seen First Day, Evie is in every scene and so we knew that the, the show kind of rested on her shoulders and if we couldn't find a good actor, uh, then, then the show wouldn't work. And so what we thought at the time would be the hardest aspect of making the show, as you can see, turned out to be the best, best thing about it. So we were, we were lucky that we found Evie and, um, you know, it's, and Evie brought something to that film that we never even imagined. And it, it, it became, you know, it's, there's a lot of talk around um, casting diversely and there's a lot of talk about people going well you know it's great if you want to cast this person but you you know they you can't find them that person might not be out there Th this is proof that if you look if you look hard enough you'll find the right person and uh, sometimes i think it's either people being lazy or just not really wanting to to do it that they don't they don't cast the right person or they don't cast diversely and um, and we're so lucky that we were able to do that and what about you, Evie? What, what was um, the, the hardest part, part about filming first day? I mean, it was all like awesome, fun, and everything like best experience ever. But um, I think maybe um, take like getting our takes and everything, like just getting prepared and everything, getting everything set up. I think that was probably the only hardest part about it. Everything else went really smoothly and really well. And this was your first major acting role, was that true? Yeah. 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 Yep. And sort of what were you, do you think you're like learning on the job too in terms of that being your first major Definitely. acting gig? What, yeah, what, what def sort of things do you think you learnt? I learnt so much. <laughs> I learnt how to um, put on a mic. I'd never known how to do that. <laughs> and um, 
like learning my scripts and everything, I thought that was going to be impossible. But really, it was um, putting your putting the time and effort into it. it. Really, it really helped, and it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. And um, you know, going around and meeting all the cast and everything that was awesome and everything like having that relationship. I'd never experienced anything like that, and I mean going behind scenes and stuff and, um, you know, getting ready, having, like, everyone around you was a great, like... Camaraderie. Like, yeah, kind of like a great space. Like, it was a really good area to stay in and mm. sit and hang out and everyone was, like, all happy and they were excited. I think that was pretty good. Evie was like a sponge. She learnt so much. We shot, we shot first day for five days. Um, Evie was in every scene, so, you know, it was eight hour days, uh, you know, really it's exhausting being on set, uh, but you know, Evie was so full of life and so excited the whole time and she just took everything in and by the end of it, she was even saying to like the, the actor playing opposite her, oh, if you just move to that side, they'll get your <laughs> shoulder in the shot and things like that. So, you know, it was great to see her just start off on day one, not having been on set and then by the end of it, just feeling so comfortable and so at home. I imagine with Lilila's question about what was the challenging part, the fact that first day is just under 20 minutes, sort of, so it's not a feature length film. Some mm. people might think, oh, that might make it easy. You're only having to do 20 minutes rather than perhaps 90. Like, I imagine it's probably no different to doing a feature film in terms of from a production perspective and obviously all the quality elements. Yeah. Is, is it easier doing 20 minutes compared to doing a two hour feature? You still have to get all the pieces in place so even though it's a short um, or you know a short or in this case a standalone television episode you still need to get every piece in place um, you, you're on set for less time so we had a five day shoot whereas you know if you were shooting a feature you would ideally be on set for at least four times that um, so yeah you still there's you still have to get all those elements in place which is a lot of work and um, yeah, it's still getting any project off the ground is difficult. Yeah. All right, great. So thank you to Liliana from Rose Park for her original question. I think we're heading back to Mary McKillop College. And this was another one of Ruby's questions, but I think we've got Lydia who's going to ask this one on Ruby's behalf. So if Lydia, you're there, we'll get you to ask your question. This one's for Evie. Okay, that was a little bit hard to hear, but thanks, Lydia. I'll read that one out again. What were your top tips for becoming an actress and what have you learnt from doing acting? Well, i got to say, um, take in the director and um, your acting coach. Take in advice. Like, they know what they're doing, okay? So, um, but also practice your script. Like, nothing ever, like, just work and work and work but um also like staying happy and stuff like that was easy so you don't need to worry about that or anything you know going on to like walking into set every day that was the best part like i walk in and i'm like yeah this is going to be an awesome day um but also um like don't be afraid to ask questions and um like if you've got something on your mind that you've been thinking about, like don't be afraid, there's nothing bad that's gonna happen. And yeah, especially taking advice, that's, that helped me a lot. And don't eat all the Milo. Yeah, <laughs> don't eat all the Milo like <laughs> I did. And in terms of remembering your lines, which you said was sort of the, one of the challenging parts, different actors have different methods for how to. Exactly. Remember. So what was your sort of, how did you work out what was best for you? <laughs> well, to be honest, I had actually acted out with my sister. <laughs> I'd sit there and we'd be, we'd be reading it and then we'd be like, as if we were there and we were doing it and stuff. She would do all the other lines and I'd do Hannah's lines. And that, that was fun and that helped me learn a lot. Like that, it kind of, it painted the picture for me, gave me an idea on where I was, um, you know, who the, my character was. So, who it, was, so Hannah, it was like doing a rehearsal at home yeah. with your sister. And, um, you know, once you'd got that 
idea in your head and what it looks like, you know, on the plane and stuff. I was just reading over it and I knew exactly what part I was at and I knew what was happening and I knew what was going to happen next. So, yeah. And I think once you've done that, once you've done the work and you know your lines, then you can relax on set. You can, yeah. You're not trying to think of what's, what's my next line because it's really important for actors to listen. Really? And so that meant that Evie could listen Ooh. to the person Anna, that she was like acting him? opposite and um, wasn't, no. you know, because I'm no, like a, the worst actor in the no, world. And so I'd be standing there going, what's my next line, what's my next line? <laughs> but once, you, once you've learnt your lines, you can relax into it and be present in the scene, which is really important. But I also think it's not just remembering your lines. You need to know when to like say your line. So remembering other people's lines and stuff, like all of that, it was just like a, having a conversation by the end of yeah. it. Like me and one of my co-stars, um, Indy, we were working and we were no doing a, one of our scenes and stuff and that was pretty easy, I think. Like we were just talking and we were like, yup, what and then we were like, boy? serious face, let's go. So yeah, it was, uh, you know, we felt real at home. Fantastic. So thank you to Lydia for asking that one on behalf of Ruby from Mary McKillop College. Our next one is for you, Julie, and this is back to Rose Park Primary School in Adelaide. And I think Hannah is going to ask this one for Julie. So we'll cross over to Hannah if she's there. Hi, my name's Hannah. Why did you choose to make this film and were you inspired by events in your life? So I'll just, I'll just read that one out so we can all hear that. So. Um, why did um, you choose to make the film and was it inspired by events in your own life? Thanks, Hannah. Good name, lovely name. Um, yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, I had never worked in children's television before. I'd come from a, a, an adult drama um, and I, there's someone very close to me who is transgender. Uh, who was six years old at the time and so um, I was seeing what she was going through, I was seeing what her mother was going through and how her mother really wanted to support her but wasn't quite sure the best way to do that. Um, and so I thought at the time, wouldn't it be great if there was a kids TV episode about a transgender girl so that, so that this girl that I knew could watch it and could see that there was someone like her on screen because when we don't see that, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk about, it's hard to start conversations and so the idea behind making it was that so she could watch this and she could see that she wasn't alone and that there were other people like her and, um, and yeah, and the good thing is that she loved the show and, and knows it off by heart so that was an added bonus. Fantastic, so thank you to Hannah from Rose Park for that question. Our next one is for both of you. Um, Many characters in First Day were very supportive of Hannah, some of the friends she met and uh, people in First Day. As advice perhaps for um, students at school, how can you be a good ally or support to a transgender children in the community? What, what are the practical things that perhaps show support, do you think, Phoebe? Well, I know that if I wanted support and stuff through school and at home, just treat us like any other person. You don't treat us different because, you know, I'd hate to be treated different than everyone else. I'd hate to go to school and you'd say hi to somebody and then you'd have to be careful in what you say to me. I mean, I'd like to be treated like everyone else and I hope that people do get treated like everyone else. I think it's good too to be respectful of people's pronouns. Um, I think, you know, there are, uh, uh, a lot of people don't identify as, as binary, as either male or female, and so don't use, um, you know, some people use non-binary gender neutral pronouns, and if someone is transgender, I think it's, you need to be respectful of what pronouns that they use. And by pronouns, I mean uh, he, she, or they. Um, and so don't necessarily assume that someone, you know, if someone, if you see someone and you think that, they, that they're male, that you use the pronoun he, um, sometimes it's good to ask and if you're not sure, ask the question and um, is that what you would prefer that people yeah. ask you? I mean, what's the harm in asking? I mean, that can't, you, that isn't, you can't take it as offence. It's like, oh, well, they're, taking, they're asking me a question so they don't make a mistake. I, I'd take that as a compliment and stuff and I'd say, my name is Evie, I go by her and she. Um, but this might person, you might need to ask them what their pronouns are. 
because you know we're all different and I don't think we should just assume. Mm -hmm. So obviously respect just understanding of the keys. And mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And treat people how you would want to be treated. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Our next question, question 10, is from Year 11 from Brighton Secondary College and I believe this is by Josh. So I might ask this one for Josh. Um, what was the matter with the character Isabella? For those that have seen First Day, Isabella was probably the bully character, I suppose, we describe her as. What challenges was she facing? So I don't know whether, um, Julia, you might want to answer that one first. Yeah, so Isabella was an interesting character and beautifully played by Indiana. Indiana brought so much to that role. It was such a difficult character to play because she was the bully. Um, but the idea behind that character was that, yes, she's the bully, but there's also stuff going on in her life that not everyone knows about. And so um, I did a, whenever I write a character, I do a lot of backstory. So I wrote a lot of backstory about Isabella's character um, and she was dealing with some issues at home. Um, we didn't necessarily want to be too explicit about that on screen. We, as you said, it's a, you know, was, it's an 18 minute film and so we couldn't go into that detail, but we also didn't want to, um, you know, really be explicit about what it was with her. We just wanted the audience to realise that there was something going on and so there was a reason behind her behaviour. Um, that everyone's dealing with their own issues and we can't just, you know, we don't know, we can't know what it's like to be someone else until we walk in their shoes, until we develop some sort of empathy with people. And so it's really important to realise that, um, you know, that everyone's dealing with their own issues. So with Isabella, she was dealing with issues at home um, and Indiana brought that real, you know, that the hardness of the bully, but also the, the, the hurt that was underneath that as well. And the way that Hannah realises there's something not right with what Isabella's going through and shows sort of empathy and sensitivity towards her, towards end of first day, is a, bit of yeah. a beautiful part of the story, isn't it? I think Hannah, when the girls were arguing, they, um, Hannah realised that there was so. something wrong and she showed empathy towards Isabella and stuff. Okay. And I think that was important to show the character that, you know, she's just like anybody else and that she cares and stuff. And that, you know, somebody who I'm being hurtful towards is actually showing me empathy and like asking me, are you okay? And um, yeah, I think everyone does go through their, uh, their own problems and stuff. And there's not a person here that isn't going through something. And um, I think that we, it's important that we just respect each other. And it's a beautiful in terms of the, towards the end of First Day, it's a, an affirmative element of, even though Hannah's going through her own challenges, she's able to sympathise with what Isabella's going through and the, potentially a friendship even could develop there in a way that you wouldn't have thought possible perhaps mm. at the start of First Day. Yeah, and I think a lot of, um, I think a lot of children, a, a lot of, transgender children but a lot of children who've been through difficult situations growing up so for someone like for someone who is transgender they have to really fight for who they are from, from a young age and they have to really fight to be recognized as who they are and so I've, for, for my experience in 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 talking with people is that they then develop a really um, a, a strong sense of self but also a really uh, strong empathy for others because uh, they're highly emotionally intelligent because they've had to, to fight those battles and so they have this emotional intelligence that they are then more open to other people's experiences and so that's kind of what we were getting at with the character of Hannah. She's been through a tough time um, and that's been difficult for her but it also makes her more able to recognise what other people are going through as well. Absolutely. Where did you find the people, the actors, for mm -hmm. the first day? Uh, and did you know them before for first day or did you have auditions? Thanks, Charlize. Uh, no, we didn't know the actors before first day. So, uh, as I said, our big challenge was finding someone to play the lead role of Hannah. So, Kirsty, our producer, put uh, a casting notice out saying we're looking for, a, you know, someone to play 12 years old. Uh, transgender girl, um, you know, to shoot for these dates. And so, you know, we kind of just put it out there. We didn't know what to expect. Um, and that one Facebook post, the casting call, was shared over 350 times. Um, 
was viewed an incredible number of times. We had a lot of support um, from within the transgender community and so um, I believe that there were, there were people behind the scenes really pushing it for us and, and because of that it went out very wide. We had 12 girls from around Australia apply for the role um, or show interest. Uh, I then Skyped with each of them and, and talked through what the process might be and, and the reality of being uh, of playing that character and being on national television and that wasn't the right thing for a lot of those, a lot of those girls. Um, we then had five of them do a screen test and of those five then, then we chose Evie. Um, and in terms of the other cast, we again, we just put out casting calls, we got people to do self tests which means that they just do a, a piece to camera on their iPhone and send it in to us and we can then watch them and see which ones we would like to uh, talk further with. And so that, I mean, it's quite, it's very, it takes a lot of time, but it's quite a valuable, it's a really valuable way of um, trying to see as many people as you can and trying to find the right person for the role. I, I think casting is crucial. It's, as a director, if you cast well, then a lot of your job's done, so. And we've just had a question come through from Thornbury High School here in Victoria from Alicia. Um, I might read this one out for Alicia, if that's okay, which flows on, I think, what you're talking about there, Julie. What were your experiences in producing First Day? How long did pre and post production take? So that obviously the audition process was crucial, mm -hmm. but in terms of the pre and post production, what were we looking at? Yeah, well, I mean, Kirsty Stark was our producer and uh, Kirsty's a wonderful producer and without her, we wouldn't have the film. Um, I'm actually very bad with, with timelines and dates, but we, uh, this was part of an initiative that the ABC ran, uh, ABC Me, and it was uh, as part of the International Day of the Girl. So they put a call out saying, we want submissions for standalone 20 minute TV episodes that focus, that are you know, targeted to a 12 year old audience uh, predominantly and um, skewed towards a female audience and that we're telling stories about, about women, about girls. So I put in the submission for first day and I was a bit apprehensive. I didn't think that the ABC would, would go for a story like that. Um, but it, you know, their support was, was overwhelming and was, you know, it was so important to getting this film made. Um, so that went in, we, we heard back from them that we had been accepted. They chose five and we were one of those five. And so then it, we, we pretty much hit the ground running. So I hadn't written the script at that stage. We just, I'd just written a one page treatment. Um, you know, I think from memory that was in about March and so I then had to write the script um, and, you know, Kirsty put the production together, we did our casting, uh, we shot in July. So we had to, in that, in that pre-production phase, find the locations, find all our cast, find all our crew, um, put all of those pieces together. Um, so that, uh, probably about April, March, April. So we probably had a couple of months Official pre, we probably had two weeks of official pre, but even though you have official pre, you have a long lead up to that time where you, you're putting everything together. Uh, we shot for five days and then post, well, it screened on the ABC on the 11th of October, which is the International Day of the Girl. So I would say we probably had a couple of months in post. Okay. It's well worth it given the end product. Yes, yes. <laughs> and when you're, when you're making something, it, it's all consuming. It is your whole world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you feel like you've got no time or space for anything else. But yes, the end product is, is always worth it. Yeah. Well, most of the time. <laughs> and when um, Julie was talking about the audition process, Evie, and you got told that you got the role, yeah. do you remember that moment and how you I felt? I do remember that moment. Where were you and how did you feel about that? Oh, I was, um, I was watching TV. And my sister, she came up to me and she goes, mum wants you. And she said it in like a tone that I was like <laughs> in trouble. I was like, trying to figure out what did I do wrong? <laughs> and then I came into my mum's room and then my sister goes, you're not going to believe it. And I'm like, what is she talking about? And I came in and mum was like, I've got the director on the um, of first day on the phone. I was like, oh God, what's happened? <laughs> like, what's... I was like, okay. So then I picked up the phone and then um, Julie told me that I got the role 
And um, I was so excited, but then when she hung up, I was like screaming. I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is it. I got the role. And then I, yeah, I was running around the house and I told all my siblings and stuff. And then they're like, really, you got it? And I was like, I did, I got the role. <laughs> and then, yeah, from then on, I counted down the days. <laughs> um, how did Evie feel after seeing the finished film? How did it make you feel? Well, I, I got to watch it before everyone else and stuff, so that was, that was good. Like, you know, it was, I watched it and I, um, I was a little bit embarrassed about like seeing myself on TV and stuff. But then I was like, it's like seeing everything come together because, you know, filming a movie and stuff, you film it not in order, you film it in different type of parts and stuff. But seeing it all come together, it brought it to life. And it was, it was amazing to watch it and see how it all had come together and all of that hard work and effort like turn out to be this amazing piece. And I imagine you felt incredibly proud to be involved? Oh yeah, absolutely. It was an absolute, it was a great script, it was a great show yeah. and you know, I believe that if it wasn't me, it still would have been an amazing, amazing show because of Julie. Oh, I, I don't and, know about that. I think <laughs> and Kirsty. <too. laughs> but I think this show, I, you know, Evie is the heart and soul of that that show, and without her, um, I don't think that it would have it, it wouldn't have been the film that it is. It wouldn't have gotten the response that it has. Um, I think we were all, everyone who was involved and everyone who saw it. Um, you know, it was, it became more than we had ever hoped because of Evie's performance and because of the heart that she brought to that role. And I think I saw a quote, Julie, um, from you that was something on the lines that stories have the ability to create change. And I think First Day encapsulated that. Is that something from your own sort of, in terms of as a, a, a director and as a filmmaker and a storyteller, is that it's one of the powerful elements for you in terms of the ability that it can change? Yeah, I think so. I think um, because when we're watching, because when we're watching something on screen, we um, we become involved in that story. We it's watching screen content is one of the few times where we can uh, be emotionally engaged in something and be able to analyse it at the same time. When we're involved in our own lives, we either experience something. Um, and it's only later that we go back to think about it that we can make sense of it. With, when we're watching screen stories, we're able to do both at the same time. We're able to watch something, become immersed in it, but also be able to, to think it through and analyse it. And I think that seeing uh, diverse characters on screen, seeing characters that go through a, a journey that is universal, uh, I think is very powerful. Um, the content, uh, as I said before, I came off making um, an a, a drama and the, that is a show um, that has primarily lesbian characters and some of the feedback we got from that was that, you know, people watching it, that it, it changed their lives because they felt like they weren't alone and I think that's the real power of screen content. Uh, we're able to access more content on, um, you know, on YouTube and, and on streaming platforms universally and so we, we're, it, it, it opens up the world for us and I think there's a real opportunity here for us to create shows where people feel more connected and feel represented and, um, and you know if you, can, if you can help someone feel less alone uh, it can really change the way they see themselves and it can also change the way other people uh, see people that they don't, they don't know and I think that's, that's, the, that's important and that's our job and, and creating content is a great privilege and an opportunity and we have to do the best we can at that. Yeah. And I think you did extremely well. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we are out of time. We've, we've hit our 45 minutes. So I'd really like to thank um, Evie and Julie for coming in and for all of the great questions that we've got from the schools yeah, around the country. You, so really, we've got a few more that we unfortunately can't squeeze in, but um, we'll be putting up um, video of this on our YouTube channel. So if you're not watching it live, hopefully you get a chance to watch it later. But again, I'd like to thank Julie and Evie. It's been really fabulous. And to all of the participants out there, all the schools and people sent questions in, thank you. Um, but we'll leave it there. So thank you for joining our first day Q&A webinar. And we look forward to seeing you next time. So bye for now. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye. See ya.